Hey everyone, I am Velvet Wells. This is Yup International Improv. If you're up for it, it's my opportunity to play with players around the world in their time zone, on their schedule. Sometimes it's late, sometimes it's early, sometimes the sun is shining on my face. I don't need any extra lights. And sometimes that brightness comes from the guest that is joining me. Uh, today is no exception. Uh, please introduce yourself to everybody. I mean, we all know who you are, but for the three people, maybe uh, introduce yourself. Hello, everyone. Hi, this is Anisha, and I am tuning in from Bangalore, and it's 11.31 p.m. Ooh. So good to be here. If if we time it right, then this could go into the midnight hour for you. Like, we could just, and then, you know, we'll see what happens. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Party time. Anisha, uh, as as we do every time, uh, I get you to pick a number. And uh, we have 100 and let's say 175, 177. Let's do the full 177. What number would you like to pick for our scene? Seven. Seven, right up at the top. Let me scroll back up to the top. This one comes from, uh, from Michelle, and it is pumpkin <gasps> spice latte. Are you okay with that as a suggestion? Awesome. awesome. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> so I will just, I'll put this on the screen for everybody to be able to see, and then we'll get going. Pumpkin spice latte. Thank you, Michelle Gilliam, for this suggestion. Do, 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 do. Mm -hmm. Tech, 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 tech. Almost there, almost there. Do, 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 do. I need, now I need, uh, I need um, changing the scene music doom, t doom, 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 doom. are you ready i'm ready doom, t doom, 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 doom. here we go now hello is anyone going to get my pumpkin sliced spiced mice minced latte to me today no no we all uh, collected yesterday, and you were extremely rude to Manisha. So we have collectively decided that we are not going to give you any special coffees. You can have a black coffee, no spice, no added milk or sugar, but that's it. So we are giving you customer service, but we are not giving you with a smile. We're not going to say your name correctly until you apologize to Manisha. Child, I did not mean to offend anyone. You? Oh, where is Manisha? Where <laughs> is Manisha? Let me have a chat with her. Manisha has taken a personal day. Uh, you said Manisha was, oh, so remarkable for being able to punch the numbers. Like, you were so condescending. You are condescending even now to me. Calling me a dear child? I don't think so. I am the manager. I take care of my staff. I know that you are the owner of this Starbucks. I know that you own this franchise. But if I cannot model with you how people should be treated, then how do I take care of the, everybody else who comes through this door? It's interesting to be able to finally be pushed back by my own staff in my own premises. You know, I could have you fired. Yeah. You could have me fired, and, and I've thought about that. I did speak to my partner about that, about that I, I probably will have to look for a, a new job. But they reminded me that it is far more important to stand up for what is right than to stand up or stand back for money. I would like to stand up for what is right. I am really sorry. I did not mean to hurt Manisha's feelings. And thank you 
so much for opening up my eyes to this. Thank you. Thank you. I, I had a lot of respect for you when I, when I first started, when you did your first round of hiring and, and you brought me on and I, you were so encouraging and respectful and understanding and I, I'm sorry for whatever has been happening for you lately that your attitude has changed. I accept your apology on Manisha's behalf, but but I know that it, it it's important for her to hear it directly. So I will let the two of you have that conversation. But I, I just I I I don't want to continue working here if this trend of acting poorly continues and then apologizing after. So I'm just wondering, like, is there anything that we can do to help you return to who you used to be? I, I really wanted to appreciate you taking this time to hold me so tenderly and to give me this feedback. It's really difficult for me to be able to process how I'm feeling. As you know, I've re like I've I've reached rock bottom and I actually I've I've been so used to getting my way everywhere. I've been so used to doors being open for me and everything just coming out for me, like on a red carpet. I feel really broken being poor. And just not in touch with anyone's feelings. And especially my own. You're, you're feeling now. I, I'm sorry that your circumstances have, have changed, but like this, as difficult, as, as uncomfortable as it is, like this is closer to who you used to be. I'm sorry for making you uncomfortable. I, I just... I... No, I know. I, I really appreciate you listening. I really appreciate you asking. Uh, it is not every day that a person who is an owner, who is whatever my dad has set up for me, all of it has been lost because of my poor judgment. And I now feel it's a day of reckoning. So yesterday when, when you came in, was that the day that you had to sign the store over to somebody else? Yes. And when you were lashing out at Manisha, you were really just lashing out at, like, well, the world, because it, it no longer was giving you a... It's just so unfair. I thought that we would be able to grow, I thought that we would be able to expand and just look at what has happened. No one wants to come to cafes anymore. No one feels safe drinking pumpkin latte anymore. We had to throw out the last batch. It, it expired before we could use it. That, that's actually the reason why you would only give you a, a black coffee. We we don't actually have pumpkin spice latte right now. 
which, uh, I mean, on the upside, it's one thing that the new owners don't have access to that you did. It's a passive aggressive, but like, I think it's something we really need to think about. This whole idea of what we need, what we want, and what we have. I was so obsessed with acquiring mm. and hoarding what I didn't need. Miss Mitra, I, 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 I wanted to be you. For the last two and a half years, oh. like you were who I aspired to be. I thought like, I'm going to work this job. I'm going to do as, as well as I can. I'm going to save to open my own franchise. Like I was hoping you would franchise a, a cafe to me. And then like, I would someday be you. Like I wanted to acquire your position and the respect that you get when you walk through a door. I wanted I wanted all of those things, and now I'm hearing, like, even that is a struggle. Yes, George, it's very lonely at the top. And I am really lucky to have an honest employee in you. So what, what are you going to do next? I'm almost at a point where I think I might be busking on the streets. <laughs> We've had to write over all our property. It's a cold winter out there. Well, I mean, I, I, I don't know how the ownership transfer works, but I mean, if you wanted to sing in the window, I, I wouldn't chase you out. I've just lost my song. Would you sing with me? I mean, we did sing at, 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 uh, at Georgia's uh, birthday party and that was that was fun. Yeah. I need a little music and a little hope. If you need some hope, you can call on me. If you need some hope, let music set you free. I need some hope. I Set us free, but I must remember to be grateful for thee. If you need some hope. Let me get you your coffee. Thank you so much. Scene. All the capitalists in the world could go through such a transformation. Please, please. <laughs> I, I feel, I, yeah, I feel like this is like a, 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 like Scrooge. This is, you know, the three ghosts have all appeared and like, now what? And oh, um, thank you, Anisha, for, for having that scene with me. Um, I enjoyed it. I enjoy, I, I mean, I liked I like to make people smile and I like, I want to please and I want to, so in this one, like that came out, that happened. I mean, that, that, um, instinct happened, but also it's like, no, that's not what this scene is about. This scene is about like holding that space. Uh, and I was enjoying holding that space with you. Um, yeah. Yeah. But the, the other thing that, that I realized as we're going through it is 
oh, this doesn't have to be solved. It is enough to allow, mm. like, it, it, part of holding that space is is allowing the time to hold the space and not thinking, okay, we've solved it, now we can move on. Like, let it be the amount it need. Yeah. Yeah. You're. Uh, thank you. I, I hear that you hear me. I hear that I'm on the right, I'm in the right space with that. I totally agree with you. I love, I love scenes which don't have a definite ending and they're left to the imagination of our audience, whatever they make it to be of Miss Mintra singing, busking. Uh, now, was the busking just so that you could have a, have a moment of song? <laughs> <laughs> I loved it. I love your voice. And I love all the beautiful things you do with musical improv. Thank you so much, Velvet. Well, Such thank you. a delight. Thank you. I, uh, look, I, I, I don't hesitate to sing ever, ever. But at the same time, I, I also try not to force. I, I don't force it on anybody because it does come from a place of joy. But I recognize certain moves when I see them. It's like, oh, here we go. Okay, fine. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> However, I also I also see this space specifically as uh, like we are creating together. So for mm. me, it's not a okay. I'm going to sing. It's we're going to sing, and I'm go I'll set something up so that you can sing. I don't need like I have lots of opportunity to sing if I want, um, and this isn't necessarily the medium for which duets can really be sustained, especially a cappella. You mm. can do it, but it's like. It takes it takes a little bit more that this is the first time we're really playing together. So mm. for me, in my mind, it like, oh, it takes a little bit more to put that together um, because mm -hmm. of the lag and the and, you know, and our, anyway, there's there are a lot of reasons why I hold back from just going, OK, full blown musical. Here we go. Uh, right from mm. the very beginning of a scene. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. Thank you. Well, thank you. I was For I was very glad that up. <laughs> I was very glad what that I you sang. Kind of. Yeah, yeah. Yay! Yay. <laughs> like this, this is why musical <laughs> is difficult. Is we both go? <laughs> okay, I go. Okay. Oh, uh, uh, um, yeah. No, I was very glad that you sang because you should sing. Not should, but it is a joy when you sing. So thank you for singing, uh, and thank you for for going for it. Um, talk to me a little bit about, or talk to everybody else, because because I know a little bit of this already. Talk, uh, share a little bit of your work with City Lamps and the other playback theaters that you do. Yes, uh, thank you, Albert. I play back with City Lamps, uh, which is a theater company about two years old. Um, based in Bangalore, we used to do only physical theater, but with the pandemic, we started doing Zoom Prov, uh, and we've been having shows, so we have monthly shows. Uh, we've had corporates reach out to us for helping them with training, and uh, playback theater basically involves the teller or the person in the audience sharing their story and as actors we play it back for them and hold that story with metaphor, poetry, music. And uh, though I have just started doing it during the pandemic, I am enthralled by the form and um, also been uh, participating in jams happening across the world thanks to the pandemic, some good points of it. Uh, so I've been uh, playing back with True Story Theatre, which is based in Boston. And uh, yeah, looking forward to doing more playback and learning more about the diversity of the form. Uh, uh, continuous learning is, I mean, it, it happens. It's how much we internalize. But, you know, sometimes lessons happen to us until we figure out how to, how to work with them. <laughs> Um, do you find with playback theater that it has enriched um, the lighter stories or the lighter improv that you do, like the like a maestro or a, a format that isn't based on the authenticity so much? Do you find that that playback style informs any of the other styles that you do? Uh, I do think playback has been the base for me. Hmm. Improv came to me afterwards. Hmm. 
in terms of even exploring uh, theater online. And also in the kind of training I do, uh, like I've been attending, we have rehearsals I we, as facilitators because I'm part of a team. We put our heads together and think, okay, what are the concepts that we need to touch about and what do we go deeper in? What are the, like we've had Lakshmi reaching out to facilitators from across the world who've been generous to come and teach us about long form and short form. And I find a lot of those deeper concepts are similar in playback and improv. Um, and like I've had discussions with Ari when he's been looking at our scenes and being like, okay, now this is how playback is different from improv. Mm. So while there are a lot of similarities, I feel there are a lot of very definitive uh, differences in technique, in how we arrive at what we are doing in a scene, how in improv we start in the middle of a scene um, but how in playback it's about the teller is the the person that we are serving and we are holding that space for, uh, which is very fascinating from a psychodrama point of view and from a point of view of how do we create community and spaces for more stories. Wonderful. Uh, yeah, I... I um... <laughs> I, I was transported back to when uh, there was a, a brief period of time where I was looking at playback theater as a, as a format for myself because I, I loved improv, but I was very much steeped in the comedy of improv as opposed to the honesty, the authenticity, the, the truthfulness, like going for the truth or going for the metaphor of the truth rather than going for the punchline of, of the story. And uh, so, mm. I, so I was not a good fit. I did not have the training to be a good fit for playback at that time. But that was also early, early on in playback being a format. Uh, so, it, but the other part of it was there also wasn't room or there wasn't a lot of training for people to, uh, to be able to, to learn those skills. And so it was very mm. much like if you're not a good fit right now, then we're not even going to consider you. I remember hearing when I heard about City Lamps and how you had your open jams and things like that. I was so encouraged to hear that 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 model or that particular group that was closed and how they did it isn't the only model of it. And and as a as an art form, it is far more accessible now to more people, uh, at least initially to get them to see if that's something they they would like. So I, I'm very fascinated by this avenue of this art form, uh, and uh, and I'm very glad that you are part of it. Yeah, come and join us sometime, Velvet. We'll be delighted. We have open jams yeah. once a month. We have open readings, um, and uh, we also host workshops. So yeah, it'd be lovely to have you yeah. bring your sound and even like. I think that's the beauty of uh, playback um, and that is what I think fuels my curiosity about improv that I, I want to understand what is the comedic element, how do I kind of, you know, touch the audience to tickle them to laugh and in, in, in playback it's like just being in that moment and holding that moment is so precious mm. and every story that I play back for also transforms me inside like it's it's something intangible and very subtle yeah um yeah so it would be delightful delighting to share it with you and discover it with you thank you uh i want to acknowledge two things one in the scene you gave me compliments and i deflected immediately not even not even a, a thought it was just like yeah, anyway, let's keep going with the... So So I acknowledge that that's true. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. The second is... Uh, no, I have three things. So the second is thank you for the compliments, even if it was to my character. And the third is one of the things that we did in our scene, which I know is true, that I tell people when we're doing musical improv it's true, and that is holding space and silence as valid offers 
as mm. making noise, making sound, singing, whatever, whatever those verbal offers may be. Silence is super powerful. And that's what I felt from our scene together. It's like, oh, we're in a hurt place. Let that just be. And there were points where I'm like, I'm smiling because I'm feeling the power of the, through the screen, I am feeling the power of this emotional exchange, this interchange, this, this silent discourse. And I was so thankful to be able to, to do that and not feel like it had to be rushed. Yeah. Yeah. I'm fascinated of playing with silence. I really want to uncover and go deeper in it. I feel the most poignant conversations are the ones with silence. Uh, and like, I also feel the whole idea of, of being in an interaction where a lot of things are left unsaid. They just have more tension. I, I, I think this is something that Lakshmi also explores in her workshops about the tension of the of the scene and what to improvisers bring with that silence is something I'm, I, I really want to um, deepen my practice in that. Yeah. And I'm so glad we found that in our scene. It was really lovely. Thank you. Well, thank you. Uh, yeah, it is, it is one of the many skills and one of the many things we have access to incorporate in this story that we are developing on the fly with each other. Uh, and yet, depending on the style of the show or the style of the of the performers, it is not one that is often employed. Mm. It it tends to yeah. be a rare tool that we bring down uh, to bring into scenes. Uh, if it's a quick scene, it's really hard to hold silence. In this yeah. kind of scene, or or if you're feeling a need to to solve or be funny. It's really hard to just mm. be silent and and sit in the emotion. So, and you pulled mm. it off just yes. like that. You were like, mm, yeah, it's what we did. <laughs> You're so kind. <laughs> it was fun. <laughs> All right. Um, are, do you have any shows or, uh, or any passion projects or anything coming up for yourself in the next little while that you would like to share with people? City Lamps is at the moment taking a break, mm -hmm. but I am I'm looking at exploring musical improv, and I am looking to perhaps find a team which can like explore these different facets of improv. And so that like, I'm putting it out there, maybe 2021 will bring that to me. But I am really grateful also of being part of the improv community of like this pandemic, uh, it would have been almost impossible to survive almost for me, like being an extrovert, being someone who's charged by meeting people uh, to have been in the four corners of a room. But because of improv and playback, I feel I have discovered an entire new universe. And I, I, I will like just give out my gratefulness uh, to the improv community, which has, who has made that happen. Uh, thank shout you. out to Che, Ari, Lakshmi. Oh, yeah, so it's such a long list. And thankful and grateful to all of them. Uh, you are saying how I feel as well. Uh, I am equally <laughs> grateful. Uh, it brought us together so that we could do this, uh, do the musical improv that we've done. Uh, I look forward in 2021 to doing even more together. All right, we're going to sign Thank off you. of here. Uh, goodbye, everybody. This has been Yup International Improv. If you're up for it, bye. <laughs>